A warm welcome to you and thank you for joining us. Tunisia's new president, Kai Said, took the oath of office on Wednesday after his surprise election victory over champions of the political establishment in the country. He was sworn in before members of the Constituent Assembly and other top state bodies. Said, a professor and conservative with no previous political experience, won the overwhelming support of younger voters in an October 13 runoff. 72% of the votes he polled as against 27, about 27% of ballots uh, which were cast for his uh, opponent, uh, that was um, Nabil uh, Kari. The poll followed the death of uh, Beji Kaid Esepsi, Tunisia's first uh, president freely elected by universal suffrage in July. Kai Said, a political outsider and retired law professor, was sworn in as Tunisian president on Wednesday after he won a landslide victory in this month's election. Said's win delivered a heavy blow to a governing elite accused of failing to improve living standards or end corruption since the 2011 revolution that introduced democracy after years of authoritarian rule. <laughs> I swear to God that I'll preserve the independence of Tunisia and the safety of its lands and that I'll respect its constitution and legislation and that I'll take care of its interests and remain loyal to it. Said succeeds former president Beji Kind Esebsi, who died in office in July. But even after winning with a huge mandate, the new president has less direct control of policy than the prime minister, and both will quickly face a series of tough challenges, including unemployment and fighting corruption. Tunisia's president controls foreign and defense policy, governing alongside a prime minister chosen by parliament, who has authority over most domestic affairs. President Kais Said must now instruct the party with the most seats in the assembly to form a government within one week of the announcement of the final results. And the task may not be an easy one because there is no parliamentary majority. So our journalist Hanan Zabiz is online to analyze some of the challenges the new Tunisian president may face. Let's bring her uh, now, and uh, you might be already familiar with her by now, uh, been, uh, having been on the program uh, uh, many times. And then, uh, Zibis, a warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us on the program. Um, Tunisia has a new president. How did you um, uh, see the inaugural speech uh, yesterday made uh, about him? Well, the president immediately set the tone by reminding us of the importance of respecting the Constitution, restoring the, the rule of law, and fighting corruption. He also gave assurance to the Tunisian women by saying that their achievements will not be regarded lightly. He also commended the efforts of law enforcement and the army in their fight against terrorism. He also mentioned our Palestinian brothers, saying that he'll give more support to their issues. Above all, he sought to restore hope to Tunisian youth by recalling the fundamentals of the revolution and by recalling the importance of this revolution against dictatorship and promising to bring back that state of mind in which that revolution was carried out and to meet the aspirations of young people, especially in regards to employment, social equality, the future, as well as the prosperity of the economy in general. So, Hanan, you mentioned women's rights that he promises to defend. It looks like a shift from his position during the campaign where he had promised to repeal the law on gender equality in terms of inheritance. And, of course, this was validated by his predecessor. What is your take on this? 
So the president promised many things during his campaign, which was considered somewhat conservative because he spoke out against many individual freedoms which were pushed by his predecessor, Kaid Essebsi, especially the issue of equality in the inheritance between the two sexes. So we were a little surprised to hear that he was now open and that he was able to present himself as a guarantor of women's rights. So what we can say here is that we will see if he will really live up to what he is promising, especially rather since he is a president who is new to politics and who will end up with a divided government since the results of the legislative elections have not given a majority. So we will see if we will be able to know how a president can appeal to everyone. That means being accepted by the liberals, by women in general, to really strengthen their achievements and their aspirations for equality, as well as satisfying those supported him during the conservative time. Hanen, um, so much expectations, no doubt. But we need to also um, bear in mind that Professor Said is a political novice. I mean, he has no political party, uh, and as it is, uh, it is the party that um, you know that heads the legislative elections, uh, that wins the majority. That he will have to ask to form a, a cabinet, and no party has has actually obtained an absolute majority uh, so far. Couldn't all of this? Pose, um, all of this situation pose a problem to his uh, presidency. How do you imagine him dealing with all of these um, bottlenecks or challenges that may come his way? So a lot of things will definitely affect him since this presidency is coming with a divided parliament because, as we mentioned earlier, there is no party majority. So in order to create a government, he will need to form a grand coalition and of course, this weakens the political landscape a little for him. And there are already votes for parties that do not want the winning party, Enada, to form the government itself and take the lead. There were also voters that wanted the president himself to form the government. So things are already looking a little difficult for the new president, especially since, as you mentioned and I also mentioned earlier, he is a novice and he has no political party to support him. So he must now know how to manage this rather complicated situation with this very frightened parliament and with a very interesting public opinion that has already been expressed. Of course, the people are against this corrupt, incompetent political class, and they're waiting for a radical change. So the big question is, how will he maneuver? Well, we're waiting to see whether he'll be able to achieve what he promised, especially in respect to rule of law and the fight against corruption. Hanin, as they say, time will tell, and it is um, sadly at this time that we have to let you go um, as we have to talk about other stories. Uh, Hanin, I'd love to thank you, though, for, uh, for speaking with us and sharing with us uh, your insights on uh, his uh, presidency, Tunisia's uh, president, uh, Kai Said, been sworn in uh, yesterday. Many thanks. Investigative journalist Hanen Zibis speaking to us there from Tunis.